Thank you. I'm going to limit my remarks to fewer than, than five minutes, I promise. Um, I, th I think we're winning. I, I mean, if the goal is to try and make science compelling to the public so that they don't make bad health care decisions ba based on bad information, I think we're winning. And I, I can, can uh, sort of exemplify that with three stories. The first is in the early 1980s, there was a concern that the whole cell pertussis or whooping cough vaccine caused permanent brain damage. There was a story initially carried by Lee Thompson, who had a career at, at, at uh, NBC, called DPT Vaccine Roulette. It was on a, a local NBC affiliate in, in, uh, in DC, WRC TV4, but then very quickly was segmented and put on a variety of national shows, and it scared people. And, and the media coverage that that show garnered really brought the vaccine, vaccine makers to their knees. We went from three oral polio vaccine makers to one. We went from six measles vaccine makers to one. And we almost lost vaccines for American children when the, when the pertussis, number of pertussis vaccine makers went from eight to one. It, it's, there, was, there were lawsuits that followed that and ultimately led to the, the National Vaccine Injury, uh, National Ch Childhood Vaccine Injury Act. And, and, and it took 10 years, really, for the studies to be done to show that, that the whooping cough vaccine never caused permanent, permanent harm. That then what happened in the late 1990s, there was a concern that vaccines caused autism. First, it was the measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. Then it was thimerosal and ethyl mercury containing preservative vaccines. This time, we learned our lesson. And so what, what happened was, very quickly, studies were done showing that there was no relationship between vaccines and autism. Really, within months of that first concern being raised, studies were done quickly. Again, the media was awful. I mean, they carried the story the way the media often carries the story, which is to tell two sides of a story when only one side is supported by the science, and a lot of people chose not to, be, to, to give vaccines. Many people in England and Ireland chose not to give the measles vaccine, resulting in hundreds of cases of hospitalizations and four deaths. I mean, that concern killed children, basically. Then what happened, if you, and this is, I'll, I'll close with this, I think the, 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 the best part of, of, of the, the best evidence that things are getting better is, is when Michelle Bachman uh, uh, said that she thought that, um, that the human papillomavirus or HPV vaccine um, caused uh, a mental retardation, the, the media outburst was remarkable. Actually, I think that, that in that debate when she said to Rick Perry, um, so what is it? Is it, political, is it about saving lives or is it political cronyism? The implication being that because Merck had given uh, $5,000 to, uh, to, to, uh, to Perry's campaign that that had bought a state mandate in Texas. By the way, $5,000 can buy a state mandate. I I'm in for 10. Um, <laughs> but the, the, uh, what his response should have been, I'll tell you what his, uh, I'm sure you remember his response, what his response should have been was, yes, it's about saving lives. It's, a, it's about get, pr giving a vaccine that prevents the only non so known cause of cervical cancer. It's about preventing a disease that causes 10,000 women to suffer every year and 4,000 to die. It's about making sure that, that a, a, a generation of Texas school children don't grow up at risk for, for this disease. It's about making sure that people know that this vaccine is available and with a mandate, making sure children who otherwise couldn't afford it would get it. That was the right answer. What he said rather was, I have a, a, a campaign war chest of $30 million and, you know, $5,000 doesn't buy this. Well, I, the implication being that it would have taken more to buy him, um, which <laughs> was unfortunate, but it was a lost opportunity. But what was really good was that the media responded absolutely in favor of, of the science. I mean, it was, it, was, it was remarkable and overwhelming. And I think it, it's a sign that we've gotten much, much better. I mean, even Mother Jones, you know what was uh, did a positive story on vaccines. You know, and so I guess they, they, what they found was that when they were asked to decide what did they hate more, you, you know, sort of a, a somebody on the a conservative like Michelle Bachman or vaccines, the answer was the conservative is who they hated more. But um, again, and I think actually when Mother Jones does a positive story on vaccines, I, it might be a sign of the apocalypse. So just just be careful. But. Um, all in all, I think, I really do think a lot of people have stood up for science recently, and it, it's been very heartening, and it's made a difference. I, I think it's, real, it's really made a difference. You're starting to see pediatricians start to be much more passionate about vaccines. You're starting to see uh, hospital administrations like ours stand up for the influenza vaccine and whooping cough vaccine in our hospital among healthcare workers. I think there's really been a rally in support of vaccines, so, and I, I think it's, it's made a difference. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.